Okay, so I did a video recently uh, about running Linux on an iPad, and I had a question on it yesterday from Nicola. Do you need an internet connection to remote connect to the Pi? And I said, yes, you could tether both to a phone. And Nicola responded, thank you for answering, but in some videos, people talk about how they do not have to rely on an internet connection to use the Pi with the iPad, because the iPad can communicate with the Pi through the USB-C cable. So right now I'm a bit confused. I want something which will give me desktop apps on my iPad. A cloud PC is way too expensive right now. So I had a look at it and I found this guide from TechCraft uh, which explains how to use a Raspberry Pi 4 through the USB-C connection on an iPad. Now back when I first watched this video, I didn't have a USB-C socket on my iPad. I had one of the older iPad Pros. But now I have, uh, and if I show you my Pi setup, so this is a Pi 02W. You can see there's an SD card in there with a Raspberry Pi OS buster on it. Uh, I've got a USB-C to A adapter and this one is a micro USB to USB A adapter. Now I could use the one without the GPIO pins, but um, that one's connected to a Pi Sugar battery. So let's use this one. And I can plug this in either way. So I can plug it in this way so it does protrude out the back a little bit, or I can plug it in the other way so uh, the back of the Pi is facing me. Now it doesn't obscure the screen, and this is probably the best way to do it. Uh, because it means you can put it flat down and it's still all right. But I'm going to plug it in this way because I've got a holder to put this on. So when I plug this in, you can see the light comes on. My Pi Zero 2W is now being powered by the iPad. And let's pop it on a stand so I don't have to hold on to it. And let's move in a bit closer. So now if I drag up, uh, I've got VNC Viewer on here. Uh, now, this connection is actually going from the Raspberry Pi to the iPad through the USB-C connection. It isn't using an outward internet connection like I was using with XRDP in my previous video. So this is connecting directly through the iPad's interface. And you can see it comes up lovely and fast. Uh, I can move it around with the pointer on the screen and it is super snappy and, and very, very nice to use. Now just to drag up from the bottom and go into settings, just to show that it is using an ethernet connection, uh, but through the USB-C. This is really clever the way this is set up and I'll show in a minute how to do it. I did try it with uh, Raspberry Pi OS Legacy and it didn't work. Uh, the guide was for Buster. So I've used this SD card, which is from a previous video where I've optimized Raspberry Pi OS, put Puffin Browser on it, and just got it working really, really well, using ZRAM as well. So if I launch the web browser, let's go back into VNC and go back into that. Uh, what's weird about this is you'll see it, if I scroll to the bottom here, you can see the Wi-Fi is showing up. So the connection between the Pi and the iPad is direct. It's an Ethernet direct connection. So it doesn't matter where you are, that will definitely work. If you want to use internet, you can still use the Pi uh, and search out a Wi-Fi network. So my Pi is connected to my Wi-Fi network, uh, as is my iPad actually, but that's not the way that they're interfacing with each other. Um, if I was out and about, I could tether to my mobile phone, just tether the Pi to my mobile phone and that would work because this connection is independent. So let's call up a web browser. Uh, so I've got Puffin on here because it works really well on the Pi Zero 2W. And you can see I can go to a site uh, nice and quickly navigating with the screen uh, whilst that's loading up, I can flick through all these options and everything is nice and fast. I can also introduce a keyboard as well uh, and you can see that it's it's lovely and responsive with the keyboard as well. And the mouse works, although the mouse is nicer to use on the iPad. It has a bit of lag on this, um, but the one on the iPad is super fast and just, just works much nicer. So let's close that website down. I did put a game on here, uh, Xmoto. Uh, which is a game that would run fine on the Pi Zero 2W. Unfortunately, it is a bit too laggy. I was figuring because this is a direct connection, it may have been better. Uh, so enter, so let's do that one and just anything. Here we go. So you can see already that this particular game <laughs> would be unplayable. Uh, there is just too much lag, but you don't notice it so much as an operating system. Uh, it definitely still seems to work nicely. So if I drag up on the top here and close that down, but if I'm just opening folders, if I'm managing files and things like that, in the video I mentioned earlier on, there's loads of good reasons to use this with an iPad, especially if you're into coding. Uh, it, is, it is very, very handy. Uh, and also file transfers and things like that. 
Um, but uh, yeah, have a look through that video because there's loads of great ideas on it. But you can see, yeah, all of this just, just works and it, and it works really, really nicely. And again, this is working so completely on battery power. Uh, I can plug this in either way. So as you can see here, it protrudes from the back slightly uh, so you can't put it down on a surface. Uh, but if I shut the Pi down, and I can do that pretty quick. So shut down and shut down on here. You'll see that the light will go off. As soon as that goes off, I can unplug it. There you go. And just to show you again what it is, it's just a Pi Zero 2W. You can use this on the Pi 4 as well. Same principle, but obviously the Pi 4 is a bit heavier. Um, but USB-C to A adapter, USB-A to micro adapter, and that's just plugging in. So if I want to be able to lay my iPad down, if I plug it in this way around, then nothing sticks out from the back, and I can pop it down on the surface, and that will boot up. And if I hit cancel here, just wait for a little bit and then click on it and it should log me back in. No, it's not there yet. So it's still starting up on the pipe. Oh, I can see the light flashing on the other side there. So if I hit cancel and go in again, there you go. So I'm, I'm back in and everything is working. Right, let's show you how to set this up. Okay, so I'm gonna use this excellent guide by Ben's Place, Pi 4 USB-C gadget. Uh, let's pop an SD card in the slot. I'm using Twister OS to do this because it already comes with Raspberry Pi Imager and loads of other things and it's all ready to go. So first off, let's go to downloads.raspberrypi.org and scroll down to Raspberry Pi OS ARM HF. I'm going to use the light version and then images. And this one from 2021, 28th of May 2021 was the last version of Buster. And we need this version, which is 444 megabytes. So you can see that's downloading. Now the version I was using uh, just now was not the light version, so I was using the standard version, which is about a gig, but just for the purpose of this, to make the video quicker. Uh, yeah, so it was this version, ARM HF and images, and then again, 28th to the 5th, and then you would just download the, yeah, 1.2 gigabyte version here. And I'm using my Raspberry Pi 4 for this. You could use a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, it's just quicker on the 4. Okay, so that's finished. So if I go to show in folder and then <laughs> I already I already have the other, you can see I already have the other version downloaded as well anyway. Uh, in fact, as I've got the other version, I think I'm going to use the other version. So I'm going to use the, uh, the non-light version. So let's right click on that and extract here. Okay, so that's all finished and you can see it's 4 gig. So we open up Raspberry Pi Imager. and select choose OS and use custom. Here's the image file, so click on that and open. Choose storage, click on my SD card and hit right. And then come back when that's all done. Now that's done, we can close all this down and shut down. And now I want to boot up from the newly written OS, so let's unplug the USB drive, switch off, switch on, and boot up into Raspberry Pi OS. Okay, so I've done the first time setup and restarted, uh, so let's open a web browser and do a search for Pi 4 USB-C gadget, and this is the one we want. Okay, so the first bit we need to add uh, this DT overlay to boot config.txt. So sudo nano bootconfig.txt uh, and then we need to add this line in. So copy that and it doesn't really matter where you put it. I'll just paste that in and then control X and yes and enter to save that. Now we do the next bit to command line dot text nano and we need to go all the way to the end. In fact, if you press down and then go back one uh, and then we need to copy this bit. Pop a space in, right click and paste. 
that only one space there? Yeah. So control X and yes and enter. And if we want to check that that's worked, we can look in the folders and root boot command line dot text. And then if I press down and then back one, the last bit has been added on. So modules dash load equals DWC2. So that's worked fine. So we need to create an empty file called SSH in boot. So we now need to do sudo nano and then boot. And then the way I did it, and there may be another way of doing it, I put in a hash and uh, so created SSH. Because when you put a hash, it means it doesn't do anything. So control X and yes and the file name to write is ssh and then enter so that's all done we need to add this bit so pseudo nano etc modules and we need to add lib composite to it So, so scroll down, right click and paste, and then control X, yes, enter. Now we need to add this next bit in. So paste that in. And we're adding deny interfaces. Oh, deny interfaces USB zero. Copy. And paste that in. Control X. Yes, enter. Install DNS mask. So sudo apt get install. Return. And yes. So we need to create this bit. So let's drag over that, copy, sudo nano, and paste that in. And then we need to copy all this in. And paste, control X, yes, enter. We need to create this one as well. Paste that in and copy all of this text in. And save that and create this one. Pseudo nano and paste that in. Loads of text here. Copy that and paste. And it all is in there. If you scroll up, you can see that the whole lot's gone over. Control X, yes, enter. So you need to make root USB executable. So we need to copy this bit. But we also need to put in sudo and then paste that in. And enter. And we need to add root to etcrc local so let's copy that sudo nano paste that in and we're adding this bit in and paste that in and save that and that should be it. And if you have a look in the bottom, it does say about different USB-C cables. I found this, certain USB-C cables don't carry data very well or very reliably, um, but uh, decent quality cables are usually all right. So we can now reboot this, or in fact, shut this down. I'm gonna reboot it first in this configuration just to see that it reboots. And there's one step that I forgot, Control-Alt-T, 
and we want to enable VNC. So sudo raspi dash config and interface options. VNC, if you have a look at the top right of the screen, you'll see there's nothing there at the moment. If I click yes, VNC is enabled and you can see VNC has started up here. So let's hit finish. And uh, I'm happy with that, I'm gonna shut that down. Okay, so Pi02W, exactly the same as before. Let's pop the SD card that I've just created in and plug it into the iPad. There you go. And you can see the light has come on. VNC is available from the App Store, uh, so I'll tap on VNC and let's set this up. So when you get VNC for the first time, and I thought that you had to pay for it because when I went to the website, it doesn't talk about any free tiers or anything, and you can see it says sign in here. Uh, but if you just tap on this part of the screen and then plus, then you can start typing in. So 10.55.0.1, I'm gonna call this test and hit save. That should be ready now, it's been going for a little bit, hit connect. Pi is the username and Raspberry if you haven't changed anything. And you can hit remember password so you don't have to log in every time, hit continue. And you can see all of this works fine, look. Everything is nice and snappy, nice and responsive. So we go to appearance settings, all of that comes up just as it would. And let's shut this down. Just to show this does work with the Pi 4 as well. I did have some resolution problems when I booted up, but I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, so basically my iPad is powering via this cable, an old pixel cable, uh, is powering the Pi 4. And I've also got it plugged into my monitor because I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So let's have a look at that. So HDMI is connected to the back monitor. And if I basically start riding the bike, you can see that it works absolutely fine like this. Not a problem at all, uh, there isn't much lag at all. But if I try and play the game and look at the bottom screen, it is better on this, but it's it's definitely not as good as the uh, native monitor, which is to be expected. But I guess there'll be some games which are playable on this. Um, this is a game that you definitely can't have any lag because you'll just end up flipping over. But uh, if I look up the top screen, uh, it is just much, much smoother. Now I didn't have any problems with the Pi Zero 2W, everything worked as shown in the video, but when I first connected my Pi 4, I got this error as shown in this Tom's Hardware story. Uh, cannot currently show the desktop, and uh, the fix that worked for me was uh, using Raspi Config basically, so pseudo Raspi Config, display options, and resolution, and you can see I've got CEA mode 4, 1280 by 720. So it defaults to this one, uh, monitor preferred resolution, and uh, obviously whatever the iPad was showing to the Pi 4, it didn't like. But once that was saved and rebooted, everything worked absolutely fine. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.